here, boss. How can I be of service? Zack, let's go over our progress. We've got a complicated case on our hands this time. Especially as far as the Clarksons' relationships go. But in a way, it's also a simple one. Understanding them on a deeper level is the most efficient way to uncover the truth behind all this. That's the one thing I'm sure of. Zack, let's start with the people who were closest to the victim. Lise Clarkson, the victim, is the granddaughter of the current head of the Clarkson family. Her mother is Galena, an ex-actress, and Lise clearly inherited her beauty. Except for her eyes, that is. Lise's eye color matches that of her father's. Now, do you remember who Lise Clarkson's father is? That's right. Lise's father is Danny Clarkson. His real name is Daniel E. Clarkson. He's from Florida and used to be the CEO of a talent agency. Danny struck the heart of Galena and successfully became a member of the esteemed Clarkson family. Despite being the son-in-law, he acts like he was born a Clarkson, but he's still just the son-in-law. Next comes what happened to Lise. According to Alexis, Lise said that the man was as tall as an oak tree I believe that's the same 10-foot-tall giant who made the fingerprints we found in the cold storage warehouse. Now, what did this man do to Lise prior to her murder? Yes, that's it, Zack. The man as tall as an oak tree followed Lise around and watched her. Despite his towering stature, he must have been rather shy. Or perhaps he was merely biding his time and planned to kidnap her from the very start. If that's the case, there should have been some evidence left at the scene of the crime. Hmm. Zack, we're still missing some puzzle pieces. Speaking of the scene of the crime, I did some profiling in the plantation's control room. The truth it revealed to us was nauseating and horrific. But we need to touch upon it if we wish to proceed. Isn't that right, Zack? Who actually murdered Lise Clarkson? Yes, that's right. Lise's own mother killed her while she was dreaming about some bizarre new world. This is by far the vilest and ugliest crime we've ever seen. The fact that Galena set up her daughter's body at an altar makes this case even more complicated. Remember, not a single sacrificial human murder has ever been proven and documented in all of American history. The real world is far more complex than what we see in films and video games, and sacrificing a human life for something else is no easy task. In conclusion, Zach, through our investigation, we found one character who sticks out more than anyone else. You know exactly who I'm thinking about, don't you? We'll need to have a word with her in the near future. Who's the stylish woman we saw during the profiling? <laughs> Professor R. We haven't met her yet, but she's deeply intertwined with this case. Let's wait for the skeletal gentleman to guide us to her with an oracle. Well, Zach, what do you think? Isn't the Deep South something? The people here are just as warm as the weather, and the food is to die for. Hmm. Might be nice to move down here after I retire. What, still too early to talk about that? You may be right. After all, this case has only just begun.
Galena can't be the killer. They're making all this shit up. If what you say is true, Daniel, how do you plan to prove it? It's nearly been a century since the Clarksons first took control of Lucari. One hundred years. I always thought my legacy would live on for two, no, three hundred at least. I'm gonna find the real killer, and beat the living dog shit out of him! Yet it looks to me like times have changed. We ain't in the good old days no more. You understand me, boy. Yes, sir. I'm right there with you, Paul. I'm gonna continue what you started, sir, and make the Clarkson family strong again. First... I need to find whoever really killed Lees and bash their fucking brains in! I saw this coming. Ever since the day Lenny left home, the town of Lucare has been cursed. We can't stop what's happening now. It's too late. It's beyond me. No. It's beyond the minds of anyone who comes from the olden days. You understand me now, boy? Yes, sir. Believe me, I do. I'll kill him. Just leave everything to me, Paul. Hmm. Are you serious about this? Yes, sir. Right hand of God. Look right in my eyes. I ain't lying. I'm serious. I just need you to lend me some troops, sir. We need retribution right now. That's the job I've been given, and I intend to do it. Well then, let me ask you one more time. Are you serious about this? Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm a Clarkson, and all Clarksons have a job to do. Isn't that what we always say? Mm-hmm. Then I'll need an arm. Yeah. What? Well now. You want to use my troops, I'm going to need to know whether or not you're really serious about this. Just one arm. Slide it on through that wire there, and it'll take care of it for you. Paul, I mean, you're joking, right? Daniel, have I ever told you a single joke? Uh, no, but... If you want to become a real Clarkson, <laughs> then you done got yourself a job to do. Wait, Paul, I, I get it now. You, you, you want me to stick it in and pull it out at the last minute, right? You, you, you want to see if I got guts or not, but there, there's going to be another way. You, you can't be serious, sir. Hey! Hey, knock it off, you assholes! Let me go! He's just joking with me! Let me go, goddammit! Oh, please, sir, don't do this! Just tell me this is a joke, please! I am a Clarkson. And no matter how our fortune falls, all Clarksons have a job to do. That be the law of this land.
Yo. Yo. You can you hear, hear me, me, right? I'll be with you soon. I'm not sad. Honestly, I can't wait. It's all I think about lately. I mean, we'll be together again. We'll get to discuss movies and food again. Everyone around here has bad taste. They don't understand things the way we do. It's a shitty world filled with shitty people. Oh, that reminds me. There are movie theaters and restaurants over there, right? As soon as I get there, let's go grab some peanut butter hamburgers and yogurt and smoothies. I'm so excited, York. Please, York, don't rush me. You just need to wait a bit longer. I still have one job left to do. I need to finish it. I have to. Or else I'd never be able to face you. Just, just give me a little more time, okay? So, Lise's mother, Galena Clarkson, confessed to murdering Lise. <sighs> but then immediately afterwards, she went insane. So you had no choice but to detain her. What a terribly convenient story. You were the first person to find the suspect hiding at a farm on the edge of town. And you even got her to confess to the crime, right then and there. Did anyone else get a chance to hear Galena's confession? Only us. How did you even find that shack in the first place? <sighs> Metaphysical offender profiling. Meta what? Should I know this word? Metaphysical offender profiling. The term appears six times in the Lucare report and 14 times in the 2010 Greenvale report. As long as you're solving cases, the people in charge don't really care what sort of words you use. But we're different. You utilized a highly abnormal method to instantly hone in on a suspect. Then you did it again and again. And every time you used it, one term kept appearing in your files. Metaphysical offender profiling. Mr. Morgan, would you mind explaining to us what this term means? We could try. But no matter what words we used, you'd never be able to understand. You see, it doesn't pertain to this side. Come, my fairy. Stop hiding back there and give them the explanation they so desire. <laughs> what? You're too shy? <laughs> Mr. Morgan? Mr. Morgan! Come on out. Don't be afraid. You can do it. It's okay. Come on. Come on. Is that all you have to say? Don't underestimate me, Morgan. I know you and the Clarkson share a deeper connection, much deeper than how it appears on the surface. I need to shake him with something else that's directly connected to the Clarksons. I'm gonna jog his memory by force. Those letters look very old. The postmark suggests they were sent out from Louisiana. And I suspect that dragonfly mark belongs to the Clarkson family. <clears throat> Maybe. 
So what if it does? A stalker has been harassing Patricia Clarkson for several years now. Did you know about this? Constant silent phone calls, unmarked letters. She also spotted a suspicious figure lurking near her mansion several times. And just last week, her employees spotted a strange figure lurking in the vicinity. The day someone else coincidentally used your alias and traveled to Louisiana. That's very intriguing. Aligned symbolism. Lise Clarkson also reported being harassed by a stalker just before she was murdered. You're aware of this, correct? Because I didn't find any mention of this in your report. No direct connection to the case. That's what we must have thought. The visionary lies to himself, the liar only to others. Which are you? That's enough for now. This all has nothing to do with the case. Besides, there's no evidence that proves those letters are from her. Isn't that right, my fairy? Someone stole Lisa's body and it's been missing for the past 14 years. I find it hard to believe that it was simply hidden in that cold storage warehouse the entire time. Why wasn't a more detailed investigation carried out? Mr. Morgan. According to you, at the beginning of this case, the victim's body was being stored in the warehouse on purpose. Is that the truth? They really put her body there alongside food and other perishables? It's in the report. No. The report only says it was stored using the most effective and shockingly inhuman method possible. If you can think of a better phrase, we're all ears. The report isn't wrong, you know. In fact, that might actually be the most accurate way of describing it. It's precise, and it's also kind of... poetic. You know? Wow, Simon. We never would have taken you for a poet. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> you two think this is a joke? Lise Clarkson's body was discovered in that cold storage warehouse after 14 long years. If you'd only done a proper investigation, we probably would have found her much sooner. <sighs> that poor girl. We still regret the fact that we never got to meet her. We're sorry from the bottoms of our hearts. I only hope it didn't happen that way by design. Will you comfort me? <sighs> Thank you, my fairy. <laughs> I knew it wouldn't go that easily. Maybe I should try asking my questions in a different way. I could use Agent Jones here. DVDs are all over the place. I know that he's a shut-in, but this still seems like way too many for one person. And I've never heard of any of these titles before. A stinking indulgence. And a massive DVD collection. You must live a very comfortable life. We're retired, remember? Retired in your 40s. I'm envious. But who doesn't love movies, Belle? I'm not a fan. Oh, that won't do. You should dedicate all the free time you have to watching movies. It's practically an unwritten law. Films guide us. Films are filled with every important life lesson there is. Is that so? For example, They Live, 1988, directed by John Carpenter. That film taught us a valuable lesson. Always put on your sunglasses before a fight. You know, you got a point. Movies teach us about everything we need to know. I learned about the right way to eat frozen pizza from Cobra. 
It's one of Stallone's best films. Before that, I wouldn't be caught dead trying to eat frozen pizza. I thought it wasn't fit for human consumption. But that film changed my life. Simon, that has nothing to do with the film. You're just talking about pizza. That's the window that faces the street out front. I can tell just from the layout of his furniture. Now I'm surrounded by everything I couldn't see out there. This is a nice building. Layout isn't bad either. Whew. Must be rather expensive to rent a place like this in Boston. How many other rooms are there in this apartment? That room over there, your bedroom? Huh. Why so curious, Belle? It almost sounds as if you're seeing this place for the first time. Aside from the hardware shop on the first floor, every apartment in this building has the exact same layout. We're well aware that you studied the layout of this apartment before you came to see us. There's no need to act so roundabout. Just be honest. Say it. I want to see your bedroom. Well then? Doesn't mean we'll let you see it though. Agent Jones is completely checked out. Despite the fact that we're heading deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole here. Agent Jones! Are you paying attention? Or do you intend to waste Mr. Morgan's precious time? Uh, no. Sorry. I'm just a little tired. I'm listening. I'm listening. Take your hand out of your pocket. Didn't they teach you any manners at Quantico? Oh, uh, right. Guess they slipped my mind. My bad. <laughs> I'm actually kind of nervous. I'm not used to this sort of thing. Data analysis is my specialty, you know. I, uh, I'm sure I'd be able to calm down a bit if I had some pizza, though. <laughs> uh, the FBI needs to do something about their lack of personnel. I'll have to ask the questions myself. But how should I start? Maybe I should look back over the files and calmly reassess the situation. An elegant, antique lighting fixture. And most of his other furniture is of the same quality. Why is his room such a mess, then? This is why, instead of calling him a dangerous person, they've labeled him a high-functioning sociopath. Just the usual around here. No need to worry. The usual? Yes. A strange person lives upstairs. Every now and then, he makes noise. What's strange about him? Several years ago, a woman was murdered upstairs. Her husband still lives there. Yikes. He's ex-BPD. And apparently, he's still searching for the killer. But it seems like they cut all support for the investigation due to decreased funding. The team on the case wanted to keep working on it, but the suits wouldn't hear of it. <laughs> a tale as old as time. Due to his situation, perhaps, he's been making a lot more noise recently, like you just heard. You never noticed anything, Agent Jones. Well, I did hear some loud noises every now and then, but I didn't think they were real noises coming from upstairs. I mean, look at him! It's not like he's reacting to the noise. He always just went about his business as usual for all the years I've watched him. 
so I just figured it was coming from the TV. You really amaze me sometimes. So far, everything checks out with the report. But there were always some parts of the report that didn't make sense. He expects me to believe he just happened to solve a case this difficult while he was on vacation? And metaphysical offender profiling? I won't let him distract me with his fancy made-up words. After you arrested Galena Clarkson, you had a run-in with the Clarksons. At least that's what it says in the report. What exactly happened there? Just a simple run-in, that's all. Nothing but a single phenomenon. Chasing hollow instances like that won't lead you closer to the truth. Truth doesn't work like that. A hollow phenomenon, which resulted in a mountain of corpses. <laughs> oh, Belle. We think we finally understand what you're trying to say. But don't be so voracious. How about another cup of coffee? We've still got a long way to go, you know. <laughs> yes. It's coarsely ground, so there should only be four teaspoons per cup. No more, no less. Next, the coffee travels from the funnel to the siphon. Simon, normally you only do surveillance in order to gather data, correct? Hiding microphones and cameras, sifting through garbage, wiretapping, shadowing, tracing credit card histories. You'll do whatever it takes to gather data in order to prevent crimes. That's how the FBI works. Uh, well, yeah, you're right. No reason in hiding it now, I guess. <laughs> Why do you ask? Our Southern Bell has adopted a very peculiar M.O. It's almost like she has a special power, just like us. You've been watching us this entire time, haven't you, Belle? From that window. I don't need to answer that question. You came here on New Year's Eve, then spent 49 hours watching us until you returned to your hotel room last night. You observed us the entire time without sleep or rest, and you only ate once some pizza delivered by Simon. Aside from that, you never drank any water or relieved yourself. You simply sat there and continued to watch us. You have visions, too, don't you? You came here solely to hear us talk, didn't you? But then, why bother watching us for over two days beforehand? You didn't come to talk with us. You came because you wanted to see this apartment with your own eyes. And because you're already convinced of something. Isn't that right? He who fights with monsters should see to it that he himself does not become a monster. And if you gaze long into an abyss, the abyss also gazes into you. But I... Oh, coffee. Thank you, my fairy. If you hadn't been paying attention, this coffee would have all gone to waste. The pus in our brains. It really has a way of interfering with our lives. I didn't remember. She came along. No. No, what's... Coffee. Yes, coffee. This is friggin' delicious! 
I thought I was gonna shit myself for a second there. Come on, Aaliyah, take a sip. Trust me, I'm not exaggerating here. I... I don't believe it. It's better than any coffee I've ever tasted. Of course it is. Coffee is a sacred drink. Coffee saved us. If not for its oracle, we would be on the other side right now. So I never forget to pay my respects to coffee. Especially at critical moments like this. Big black cumulonimbus clouds are in the sky, and that sound. Thunder snow is coming. Ominous. It's almost like a manifestation of the atmosphere in this room right now. Do you hear that thunder? It's probably gonna snow soon. We're in Massachusetts. That's the norm for this time of year. Well, I'm not used to the cold. If possible, I'd like to finish this up before we get stuck in a snowstorm. Agent Jones, after we're done here, I... Agent Jones, is something the matter? Snap out of it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I know, I know. Do you? Then stop daydreaming. Okay, okay, I just... You just what? I just, uh... My stomach's been letting some thunder loose, too. Thunder? The, uh... That coffee was just so good, it, uh... It what? We don't have all day here. The coffee was just so good, it, uh... <laughs> summoned forth a massive tsunami from within me. Excuse me? What is wrong with you? Now is really not the time for this. <sighs> right door at the end of the hallway. Thanks, pal. Ooh, hold on. You can make it. We can do this. It's not very far. We promise you. We did not put laxatives in the coffee. Coffee is a sacred drink, remember? Mm. Motherfucker. <laughs> There's no doubt that the report omitted information linking Morgan to the Clarksons. A need to get him to confess. Oh, yeah. That reminds me. There's a secret weapon in Agent Jones's briefcase. He's chain-smoking it non-stop. He's clearly dependent on it. Which means he might be dependent on other drugs as well. Mr. Morgan. I heard that you were always a smoker. Did you ever wonder if that was the reason you contracted your illness? What does that have to do with this case? Nothing. I'm just personally curious about it. Sometimes, people die in car accidents, regardless of how well they take care of their health. Other times, they slip on their bathroom floors and crack open their heads. <laughs> Isn't that right, my fairy? I'm not concerned with statistics. I'm just curious about you. Right here, right now. We switched over from nicotine to this. It's less addictive. That's one step in the right direction, isn't it? Perhaps. If we're talking about withdrawal symptoms or physical dependencies, but it still seems like you're smoking too much at once. Honestly, it looks to me like you have a mental dependency. <laughs> Maybe. But so what if we do? Surely you know about gateway drugs, yes? When a person starts to use one drug, it becomes much easier for them to branch out and try other drugs as well. The first drug acts as the gateway that leads them to stronger substances. Oh. Are you trying to say 
that's going to happen to us? No. I'm simply saying there's a possibility. Agent Jones probably won't be back for a while. Actually, now might be my opportunity to make some real progress. Have you ever seen this before? And please, don't say no. Saint Rouge, the drug we once chased. What about it? Saint Rouge is still circulating. It's changed shape and its composition is slightly different now. But it's still very much alive. But only in a very limited part of Louisiana. You aren't surprised? Did you somehow know this would happen? Copies of another drug being circulated isn't exactly a rare case. But Saint Rouge is special. The inimitable Enigma Powder. The origin. It has many names, and no one was ever able to copy it. We've also been trying to figure out what it's made from ever since it appeared. But it's impossible to analyze. After all, it appears to be made from common ingredients that can be found anywhere. But if you try to use those ingredients, all you'll end up with is a mundane hallucinogen like DMT. If you're lucky. No. Saint Rouge requires a special recipe. The original recipe. Which someone's been guarding this entire time. Someone who survived the incident in Le Carré. He read these over and over again, like a prisoner rereading letters from his loved ones. But the last letter was delivered years ago, according to this postmark. That must be the last time he communicated with whoever was sending these. Yet, he left them out in plain sight. All this time. Immediately after they found Lisa's body, I went to go see Patricia. In order to interrogate her, of course. So you told us. But I was unable to meet with her. She refused to speak with you, didn't she? That's so like her. No. She didn't get the chance to. You see, she's gone missing. What? To put it more accurately, no one's seen her since the afternoon of the 28th. According to her employee, she shut herself up in her room for several months before she disappeared. But since that sort of thing happened often, they didn't think anything of it. On the morning of New Year's Eve, they noticed her window was open, and when they went up to check on her, she was gone. But no one knows how long her window had been open for. This is just my hypothesis, but on December 28th, a strange man visited Le Carre and was spotted near her mansion. That man must have found some way to lure Patricia into his car, the 89 Cadillac that he bought used. Then, the two of them drove north to Trenton, where they boarded a train to Boston. They would have arrived here around midnight on the 29th, or perhaps early morning on the 30th. I believe this man is the same Billy Bishop whose name was previously recorded by the airline. So, what do you think of my guess? I'd love to hear your opinion as a former FBI special agent. Now we get it. We aren't persons of interest. We're the suspects. But what about our alibi? What alibi? I've had enough of your bullshit. You expect me to believe you haven't taken a single step out of this room? That Agent Jones is your witness? Surveillance cameras can easily be tampered with. Especially by someone like you, who knows all about how the FBI works. You're possessed by death. Go and take a look at your own face in the mirror. You look like the Grim Reaper. After you visited both Le Carre and Greenvale, you left a mountain of corpses in your wake. You can make all the excuses you want. I'm immune to them. Right here, right now, I want to know everything. You tell me the truth. Yes! You're good, Bill. Damn good. You're brimming with potential. Don't you think she's the perfect partner for our last dance? What do you say, my fairy? Don't you agree? She's good. So good. <sighs> what do you want to know? We've got nothing to hide. Go on. 
Question us. This is how it's got to be. Doesn't this remind you of something? You know what I mean, my fairy. <laughs> Son of a... How did this happen in my town? God damn it! The head and limbs were severed and lined up, according to the lines that were drawn with her blood. Just like migratory birds flying systematically across the sky. Hey, Zach, what do you think this means? They're severed roots. Severed roots? This is the way the Clarksons kill someone when they want to cut them off from the family. And how do you know about this? Everyone in town knows about it. They're just too scared to talk. What does the V stand for, then? Beats me. What, you think I know everything now? Vilatatio. It means quarrel in Latin. That's what the V stands for. Latin. Intriguing, isn't it, Zack? There are no defense wounds on the corpse. In other words, Galena showed no signs of resistance when she was amputated. But, strangely enough, there are small traces of subcutaneous bleeding around the wounded areas. That's a vital reaction which means she couldn't have been dead. You mean... Yes, that's right, Patty. Galena was amputated while she was still alive. And she never resisted. Is that even possible? It certainly isn't impossible. For example, if she was put to sleep with a drug, or if she desired the amputation herself. Why would she ever desire that? Mr. York, I'm sorry, but there ain't no way that could have happened. How can you be sure of that, Melvin? Our world contains phenomena that could never be explained with logic. This is especially true for phenomena in which humans are involved. Do you really think all the facets of love and hate can be explained with logic? Well, uh... No, I, I don't reckon I do. Yeah, might be too early to rule out those possibilities, just like you say. Zack, now we truly know just how deeply the Clarksons are involved with this. Patty, how long does it take to reach the Clarkson estate? Um, just a short drive. You just gotta head west along the Mississippi. You can't miss it. Got it. Thank you, Patty. By the way, Melvin, no matter how accelerated Patty may be, don't you think she's still a bit too young to see something like this? For the record, I have no intent to instruct others on how to raise their children, but... Holy moly, you're right! Patricia, CLG! Come on, sweetie. Kids shouldn't have to see stuff like this. Daddy, it's too late now. You sure you okay, CLG? I'm fine. Besides, I'm used to seeing stuff like that on CSI. You're the one who looks pale, Daddy. Well, it did shake me up a little. But I'll be back to normal in no time. Uh, sorry about that, Mr. York. What say we rest in the interrogation room till we all calm down, CLG? Sure thing, Daddy. I'm going to go sit with Daddy for a bit, Agent York. We can join back up later.
Galena killed her daughter, so her family cut ties with her. Do you really think that's what happened here, Zack? If this is truly the ritual that the Clarksons used to cut ties with someone, why would they go out of their way to do it here, in a holding cell? They could have easily done it after we released her. And judging from how Danny Clarkson was acting, I think it's clear that he really loved Galena. How could he accept this grotesque butchering, even if it was for the sake of the family? Do you really think aiding on this? We should get back to the investigation. As long as we keep moving, the answer will inevitably fling itself straight at us. You found the Flying Serpent, but now the Flying Serpent will come to find you. Yeah, that sounds right. And it looks like this Flying Serpent is a venomous one. Some become feasts, while others are eaten alive. Which fate would you prefer? Both sound marvelous. But let me check with Zack. A fine answer. <laughs> Find, Find the one who fired the pistol at heaven. Within the white hall of beds, brandish the ticket to the goddess. And once again, you will see the other world. Do you comprehend the Oracle? Zack, it looks like he's hell-bent on leading us back into that other world. Follow the Oracle. Oh, I will, Hoongan. There are only two types of things in our world. Things that should be resisted, and things that should be accepted. And I believe this Oracle is something to accept. <laughs> Do you think we're crazy for believing everything that skeletal gentleman says? No, we're not crazy. Not one bit. This is our destiny, that's all. But I shouldn't need to explain that to you, Zack. The one who fired the pistol at heaven. Firing pistols at the sky might be a rather common occurrence for the South. Remember? Young Guns, 1988, directed by Christopher Kane. There's that great scene where Emilio Estevez keeps firing his Colt M187. Bingo, Zack. We're currently running a race here. And the one who started this murder investigation is indeed the one who fired the pistol at heaven. In other words, the person who first discovered the body. According to the files, Lisa's body was discovered by Chuck Thompson, a crawfish farmer. He apparently works out of a fishing hut located in the marshes south of the bayou. Let's go pay him a visit. Who knows? We might even get to see some crawfish. What? Why isn't the murderer the one who started this race? Zack, this isn't like you. Of course the murderer isn't the one who started the race. The murderer is running it. They're currently in first place, and they're breaking all the rules. Any more objections, Zack? Within the White Hall of Beds. This one is even easier. There are only a few establishments that have a whole hall's worth of beds, especially in a small town like this. I'm sure you've already got a pretty good idea about what the answer is, Zack. Beds all lined up. Only an amateur would hear that and think it must be referring to a brothel. I mean, come on. Who would ever use White Hall as a symbol for a bordello? You never disappoint me, Zack. It's a medical facility. 
They invite their patients into rooms full of beds where they're tended to by doctors and nurses clad in white. It's definitely a white hall where people are invited into beds. You always manage to impress me with your intuition. I'm really counting on you here, Zach, and I know I'll always be able to. Agent York, you're trying to leave without your trustworthy assistant? Hello there, Patty. I'd never attempt such a thing. I was simply engaging in a battle of wits with Hoongan while I waited for you. Hoongan? Yes, the skeletal gentleman in the top hat. Not that story again. Is this how you always conduct your investigations? This is the way I work. I bet you can't find a single partner. Not even in the entire FBI. That's not true. I always work together with Zack. Oh, right. Zack. Don't worry. I'll be your partner while you're here in our town. Now, let's go investigate. How's your mama? So, you're that hotshot FBI agent I keep hearing about. And who might you be? I came to claim the body of my daughter. My daughter, who was murdered in a holding cell. After you detained her yesterday. Zack, I wasn't expecting to run into the final boss this early. You must be the head of the Clarkson family, P.J. Clarkson. And you've come to claim the body of Galena Clarkson, whose dismembered corpse was found early this morning. Is that correct? Where did you learn that Galena had been murdered? Zack and I just learned of the news ourselves. This is Lucari. And I, I am P.J. Clarkson. There ain't a single thing I don't know about this town. I see. So then you must also know about the Severed Roots ritual. I have a question for you, Philip. We suspect that Galena was murdered by someone from the Clarkson family. Have you given that possibility any consideration? Listen up, you FBI piece of shit. You better watch your manners around my paw. Shut up, Daniel. But, sir... My bad, sir. I have you know I once had three children. But I must not have raised them very well. Because my son and my eldest daughter both ran away and never came back to me. The only one who stayed by my side was my second daughter, Galena. 
Then she done married Daniel here into the family and presented me with both an heir and a granddaughter. Seemed for a while as if things were finally starting to calm down. But then, someone corrupted both Galena and Lise. And I lost everything. Well, aside from my shit heel son-in-law, that is. You understand me, F. B.I. Galena's death is nothing but a loss for the Clarkson family. That doesn't mean the Clarksons are automatically innocent, though. Humans don't always act out of self-interest, do they? That mouth. You're starting to sound more and more like your mother. We're leaving, Daniel. What? Treasure. Now, whether you end up being an angel or a demon, I reckon you're the man I've been waiting for all this time. Once you finish that autopsy and we're clear to take her home, I want you to give me a call. They're phenomenal, Patty. So perfectly rural. Ominous statements, foul-mouthed insults. This town possesses a complicated system of communication that you just can't find in the city. Work-centric emails are so cold and lifeless. This is what true human connections feel like. Connections as visceral as blood itself. <sighs> so, Agent York, what's next on your agenda? The last boss may have gotten the jump on us, Patty, but I didn't let him shake my resolve. I intend to obey the skeletal gentleman's oracles, and that's that. First, we should head to either the home of the person who discovered Lisa's body or to the town's medical facility. Well, Zach, what do you think? about Galena, too, and all the other women we've seen so far on our travels across the states. Zach, I'm right, aren't I? This is a vast country, incredibly vast, and it's mostly composed of mountains, deserts, and farmland, with small towns scattered about here and there. That's how America looks to me. Compared to the scale of this entire country, New York, Chicago, and L.A. are all microscopic. Sometimes they even feel like figments of my imagination. Think back to what Las Vegas looked like when we were driving up I-15. It was a mirage. The TV and movies dress up those mirages. Hey, Agent York. Just so you know, dealing with Pastor Sanders is gonna be a big pain in the butt. A big pain in the butt? That's what I said. But I guess you have no choice but to obey your oracle, huh? which means this person is undergoing hormone treatment. Understand? It's the Oracle. This is the ticket to the goddess that we were meant to find at the White Hall. I just remembered something that Melvin said to me in the holding cell. Professor R isn't exactly a normal woman, according to him. 
Now it all makes sense, Patty. Lena Doman is the stylish woman we've been searching for. Professor R, in the flesh. You know, Agent York, you might actually have some talent after all. Yes, I'll be honest with you, Patty. Both Zack and I are extremely talented, so I hope you can trust us and continue working as our assistant. in New Orleans were a mess, all busted up and undergoing maintenance. The city was built on a swamp, so the ground is soft. All it takes is some heavy rain to cave it all in. There were also a lot of places where large tree roots were pushing up parts of the asphalt and the sidewalk. Those bumps were dangerous even when we still had our car, remember? But this town is different. The streets are all paved so cleanly that we can skate along them without a care in the world. And there's hardly any trash or graffiti to be found anywhere. The Clarksons truly do control this place, for better or worse. It's a good example of how allowing certain people to rise to power can have positive effects as well. Also, don't you find that Southern people are remarkably friendly, even to total strangers? Both here and in New Orleans, I've been amazed at how cordial everyone is. Is it just the way things are down here? You certainly don't see that sort of thing in New York or D.C. They never... The address on the prescription led us to this house. Seems like she ain't home. No lights on either. Professor R's never home, you know. Patty, why do you know so much about Professor R? I don't know that much, really. But you're the first person in town who mentioned her name to me. You also knew about San Rouge, didn't you? And when I tried to ask you more about it back then, you gave me an evasive answer. You're my assistant, aren't you? If you are, then you need to tell me everything you know about this case. Daddy don't like Lena. He said it's stupid for a man to want to turn into a woman. What? And he told me I ain't supposed to talk about her. He said that if you knew someone like her was living here, Agent York, you'd start to hate this town. That's ridiculous. Why would I ever hate this town? Because one of its inhabitants is transgender? Why in the world would that make a difference to me? The other folks in town said the same thing as Daddy. They all know about Saint Rouge and Professor R, and about how she's waging war against the Clarksons. But they all say we ain't supposed to talk about it. So, I... And here, I'd assumed that ignorant way of thinking died out with the 20th century. I guess I really am an outsider after all. I thought that everyone was cooperating with my investigation. But it turns out they were all hiding key information from me. Damn it, Zack. This just made me hate the countryside for the first time in my entire life.
Oh, I'm sorry for being so loud, Patricia. But just remember this. Person's birthplace, nature, race, and physical features have no bearing on their value as a human being. We're always free, and we should respect each other just the way we are. So you shouldn't feel a need to hate Lena for no reason. No matter what the people around you say, you can't let them control you. Sometimes things like common sense and decency can end up deeply hurting other people. I sincerely hope you don't forget that. Okay, I won't. But if Lena's committed a crime, that's a different story altogether. She may be a social minority, but she's still free and capable of knowing the difference between right and wrong. Professor R, I sincerely hope she's smart enough to understand that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Listen to the two ends and drink dry the fire water. Do this and you will see the other world. Zach, did you hear that? It's another oracle. I assume this means we're getting closer to the truth. Well, this is good. We don't have any other big clues at the moment. What do you say we continue the skeletal gentleman's game? After I spent the 90s listening to nothing but punk rock, I fell out of touch with music. But the digital audio player I received last Christmas changed everything. Nowadays, people can walk around with thousands of songs in their pockets. You following me here, Zach? That's right. This oracle is connected to music. The two ends refer to neither periods nor a movie's credits. They refer to the last letter of the alphabet, Z. And what's a word that has two Z's in it? Jazz, of course. Remember, we're in Louisiana here. The fire water is even easier. It's alcohol. Let's go to that jazz bar and have a drink while we consider our next plan of action. Don't worry, this is all part of our job. Isn't it, Zach? DC Eagle here. Got any news for me? Well, Mr. York, uh, we got ourselves a bit of a problem here. What sort of problem? <laughs> Looks like Daniel's gathered up a group of people to help him find Galena's killer on his own. If the Clarksons get serious, they'll probably put an end to this case before we even know what hit us. And it sure won't be wrapped up the way you want it to, Mr. York. Yes, that certainly is a problem. Judging from Daniel's temperament, things are bound to get out of control. Hmm. Melvin, I need to find Professor R as soon as possible. P Professor R? That's right. That ain't such a good idea. I didn't ask for your personal opinion, Melvin. Especially if it comes from an antiquated, xenophobic way of thinking that's characteristic of rural towns. Whoa now, Mr. York. What's going on here? I didn't... This conversation is over, Melvin. You need to figure out what the Clarksons are planning. Call me again as soon as you know. <laughs> Fine. Whatever you say. Also, sorry, but would you mind coming to pick up Patricia? I would never think to take an innocent girl like her into an adult watering hole. Yeah, you're right. CLG's still too young for that. Wait, Daddy! Agent York! I'm going too! Don't let me out of this! No, Patricia. You signed a contract with me, remember? I promise to protect you from all the evil in our world. That's not what it means! Patty, you're smart. Shockingly so. But you're still a child. And there are certain things a child like you doesn't need to learn about yet. Just go home for today. 
Zack and I are both in agreement on this one. <laughs> I'm so glad you understand, Patty. Okay, Melvin, that's that. I'm leaving her here. The rest is in your hands. Roger that. I'll take care of her, Mr. York. Patty, I'm sorry I have to do this. I don't mean to abandon you. I hope you understand. This next stop feels dangerous. It's okay, I get it. I'll go home early today and take care of Mama. I'm pretty busy too, you know. Good. And do tell Melvin I said hi. Hey, Agent York. About Professor R, is she really a bad person? What do you mean? I only ever got to talk to her once. Oh, uh, is it okay to say her? How do I know what to call her? Her is fine, Patty. Simply respect the gender that the person chose. Okay. She once got arrested for causing trouble with some of the Clarkson's workers. They got drunk at her bar and went crazy or something. When she came into the sheriff's office, our eyes met just for a second. Then she said something to me. As you grow into an adult, you will witness a great deal. But you don't need to take it all in. Just stay focused on the beauty of our world. I didn't get what she meant. And because of what Daddy said, it kind of scared me. But now, I reckon I understand what she meant back then. Oh, sorry, Agent York. I shouldn't have gotten into all that when you're in such a hurry. No, that was a very important story you shared with me just now. You really are the perfect assistant. Thank you, Patricia. Zack, it appears to be closed. Let's come back during business hours. Zack, it appears to be... Let's...
Look, Zack. That seat is beckoning us. Listen to the two ends and drink dry the fire water. Do this and you will see the other world. Hungan's oracle pointed us to this bar, so we must have to do something here. But I feel like the fire water part is missing something. Zack, do you see that? It's a gigantic go sign. I think someone's trying to send us a very powerful message here. That settles it. This must be a singularity. Beautiful lipstick. The color red suits you. Thank you. Red is the color of life. No human who knows the joy of life would ever hate this color. Or would they? Maybe. Maybe not. But I know of a drug with a red color that certainly doesn't signify life. It sometimes even steals the lives of those who drown themselves in it. Catch my drift? Before a candle's flame burns out, it burns brighter than ever before, blazing like a shining red star. Don't you think that instant is more valuable than a century of smoldering? That blaze doesn't cast out the darkness. It only emphasizes it. But where are my manners? I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Let me get straight to the point. You were present when Lise Clarkson was murdered. And you were also involved with Galena Clarkson's death. Correct? Agent Morgan. Are you a man who can hold his liquor? I'd love some fire water. We're similar. You and I. Really? I don't see the resemblance. Well, you should. Look deeper. Think about who you were when you were first born, and who you are now. Different selves exist inside your body. Are you talking about Zack? <laughs> I was born as a man. But in my heart, I wasn't so. And this is a small town. I experienced far more scorn and discrimination than anyone could ever imagine. Especially from my father. Parents are supposed to raise their children with love. 
That's the norm, right? Not for me. I was raised by my father's flesh-seething hatred. So you ran away from home, started making drugs, then seduced a young life and destroyed it? That story makes no sense to me. Think about it. They didn't burn you in a witch hunt, nor did they ever try to take your life. Yet here you are, letting your selfish fantasies drive you to torch the entire town with vengeful fire. Why did you abandon your inheritance only to end up in a place like this? What do you hope to achieve? <laughs> You've already figured out that much. Leonard doesn't exist anymore. He disappeared from me a long time ago. All that's left now is the Red Soul. The Red Soul? The Red Soul gives me strength and courage. And I vowed to use that strength to change this world. The Red Soul has the power to amplify the unique characteristics we all possess. Mentally and physically. That's why I created the Holy Red Powder. So that everyone can enjoy its divine benefits. Mm. That's ridiculous. Our world is home to scarier monsters than violence and prejudice. Ugh. Zack. Someday, even your best friend will abandon you. No. Never. And in the end, you'll be all alone. Zack and I will always be together. <laughs> Daddy! Daddy! Where are you, Daddy? I can't, I can't find, find mommy, mommy either. either. <laughs> don't, don't, don't leave, leave me, me alone. alone. Please? Please, Daddy. Please, Daddy. She got a sack. She spiked the drink with some sort of sleeping pill. No wonder they call her the Professor. Whew. But that was a rash move. Perhaps she realized that she's finally crossed the point of no return. Or... <sighs> we need to head to the Clarksons at once before it's too late. We can still stop this.
Hey, want to talk about bridges? Why? I've become obsessed with bridges, Zack, and there's no turning back now. Remember what we saw on our way here? Back when we were driving that hybrid car before we switched over to the skateboard. We passed over the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway, the longest bridge over water in the entire world. Remember the sudden downpour that made it impossible for us to see the road? The rain was so torrential that we couldn't see more than a few miles ahead of us. I'm sure local drivers are used to that sort of thing. They were all going normal speeds. I bet that... Zach, no nothing. Just felt like saying that.
Zack, it's a singularity. The Oracle was right on the mark. The mouth to the other world is open, ready to swallow us alive. I think this case is finally starting to come together. Here we go again, Zack. You're as excited as I am, aren't you? You don't have to explain everything. No need for words right now. Not while this eccentric, provocative experience is begging us to come inside.
Zack, do you feel it? Something happened here. It's the same feeling I got when we entered the place where Lise died. <sighs> Professor R. Lena came in here alone. It looks like nothing but a suicide attempt to me. Did she have some trick up her sleeve? Philip J. Clarkson, the horrible father that Professor R. spoke of, of course, he looks perfectly calm. It's hard to believe that it's only my second time seeing him. He's an overwhelming man, Zack. Now you decide to come back, huh?
Zack, that's a miniature bomb. Lena must have set it here. Is this her trump card? It looks pretty elaborate. Another accolade for the professor. She also displayed expert precision when she used that fire to make my cocktail. Her wisdom gave birth to San Rouge. She must also have an advanced understanding of chemistry. I just hope she hasn't laid any other traps for us up ahead. Now you decide to come back, huh? What for? I know you've been hiding from me. Planning God knows what. Too bad it ain't gonna amount to anything. It don't matter what you do. The Clarkson family is already on its last legs. After only a single century, we're on the verge of losing all that power our ancestors built up for us. Ever since the day you left home, that was the beginning. That face, Zack. She looks so calm and collected. Perhaps she intended to take her own life after she murdered Philip, but that wouldn't solve anything. We know how calculating she is. Surely she must have understood that. Yes, I abandoned my family, but that has nothing to do with the Clarkson's downfall. It's much more complicated than that. Oh, I agree. It's a hell of a lot more complicated. Just look at these assholes. They're so goddamn stupid. They won't even shit unless I tell them to do it. And you know what? Back in the old days, that was A-OK. -okay. Don't like someone? Beat the piss out of them. Need something? Steal it from the sucker next door. Life was so much simpler back then. And 
time flowed in proper accordance with human behavior. But now... <laughs> it's all so complicated now. Everything's changed. They certainly look a little rough around the edges. Perhaps we should just call them the Clarkson Gang. They're holding their weapons like total amateurs, which means they must not have had any formal training. Even if they came rushing in all at once, they'd still be no match for us. Maybe the Clarksons aren't as fearsome as the rumors make them out to be. Or perhaps they've fallen into such a decline that they can't even manage their own allies any longer. The legacy of the Clarksons is like a candle in the wind, a sad vestige of what it used to be. But it's not completely dead yet. So, uh, you came here to snuff it out yourself? Oh, no. I didn't come to snuff anything out. I came to make it burn red once more. What in hell is with you? Did that red powder finally make you lose your mind? Thank you. 
Zack, do you feel it? Something happened here. It's the same feeling I got when we entered the place where Lise died. It looks like nothing but... Did she... Philip J. Clarkson. The horrible father that Professor R. spoke of. Of course, he looks perfectly calm. It's hard to believe that it's only my second time seeing him. He's an overwhelming man, Zack. Now you decide to come back, huh? What for? I know you've been hiding from me. Planning God knows what. Too bad it ain't gonna amount to anything. It don't matter what you do. The Clarkson family is already on its last legs. After only a single century, we're on the verge of losing all that power our ancestors built up for us. Ever since the day you left home, that was the beginning of the end. They certainly look a little rough around the edges. Perhaps we should just call them the Clarkson Gang. They're holding their weapons like total amateurs which means they must not have had any formal training. Even if they came rushing in all at once, they'd still be no match for us. Maybe the Clarksons aren't as fearsome as the rumors make them out to be. Or perhaps they've fallen into such a decline that they can't even manage their own allies any longer. Yes, I abandoned my family. But that has nothing to do with the Clarksons' downfall. It's much more complicated than that. Oh, I agree. It's a hell of a lot more complicated. <laughs> Just look at these assholes. They're so goddamn stupid. They won't even shit unless I tell them to do it. 
And you know what? Back in the old days, that was A-OK. -okay. Don't like someone? Beat the piss out of them. Need something? Steal it from the sucker next door. Life was so much simpler back then. And time flowed in proper accordance with human behavior. But now... <laughs> it's all so complicated now. Everything's changed. That face, Zack. She looks so calm and collected. Perhaps she intended to take her own life after she murdered Philip, but that wouldn't solve anything. We know how calculating she is. Surely she must have understood that. The legacy of the Clarksons is like a candle in the wind, a sad vestige of what it used to be. But it's not completely dead yet. So, uh, you came here to snuff it out yourself? Oh, no. I didn't come to snuff anything out. I came to make it burn red once more. What in hell is with you? Did that red powder finally make you lose your mind? Zack, that's a miniature bomb. Lena must have set it here. Is this her trump card? It looks pretty elaborate. Another accolade for the professor. She also displayed expert precision when she used that fire to make my cocktail. Her wisdom gave birth to San Rouge. She must also have an advanced understanding of chemistry. I just hope she hasn't laid any other traps for us up ahead. Just like you said. Times have changed. You've gotten old. Your power is waning. But... I'm not going to let things end here. After you and all the old tumors die, the Goddess will take control of Lucare. And all of Louisiana, for that matter. The Goddess of Fertility. With all her newfound might. And... Who's that supposed to be? You? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. You know, you're just as dumb as everyone else. You never see things for how they really are. Oh, no. <laughs> Here, go on. Take my life. You can have it. Do whatever you want with me. But don't you forget. That's clogs in blood you got running through those veins. You took the long way to it, but it looks like you be inheriting our legacy after all. Just like I always wanted you to. <laughs> oh, I won't be inheriting anything. What? I'm not the goddess of fertility either. Well, then... But I'm still powerful. Professor R fought hard in this hall, and the last gunshot we heard sounded ominous, Zack. Everything she says seems to hint at some deeper meaning. The goddess of fertility taking over all of Louisiana with her newfound power? The details elude me, but she's clearly plotting something big. But if she dies here, she'll never be able to complete it. Why risk it then? Oh well. Let's continue on, Zack. I'm sure we'll find the answer once we reach the Inner Sanctum. Mm. 
Now this is a surprise. Huh. Zack. You're surprised. This is my house. And I can set foot wherever I please within my own house. Or is that against the law now too, FBI? Where's Professor R? I know she came here. 100 years ago, my father, Isaac Clarkson, came to this town and subjugated its people with his might. And whenever any of his kin betrayed him, he'd cut them limb from limb and make an example of them. The shadows need a way of keeping the balance, too, you see. That's why the seven roots exist. Sometimes they chop a fella's ears off, maybe scoop his eyes out. Then they chop off all the limbs. Either way, they all ended up looking the same in the end. No different from mixing up the ingredients in your food. But this, this is sick. Why would any soul ever need to line up the stumps all neat like this. What's happening in Lucari right now ain't right. It ain't nothing like what we got up to back in my day. You know, it kind of feels like what you call pure evil. I'll be real honest here. Right now, I'm afraid. The evil that's taking this era by the balls is trying to gobble up Lucare too. Francis York Morgan, you FBI son of a bitch. Just what in hell did you come to this town for? Well, I hate to rain on your sensational parade of a monologue, but my answer is simple. I came here chasing a drug called San Rouge that's been steadily permeating the southern states and I plan to arrest all the perpetrators involved in the name of justice. <laughs> oh, you sure sound like a devil, all right. So be it. You're free to interpret my words any way you like. Well, interpret this. You've come here to bring death and destruction to our town, or my name isn't P.J. Clarkson. You leave a mountain of corpses in your wake. So go on and suffer. In the name of justice, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs>
Zack, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to prove that we fight on the side of justice, but why was Philip here in the first place? I thought we were inside her mind. Hmm. No need to answer, Zack. The only reason this world's so fun is because of all the mysteries it holds.
I grew up in this room. As my back broke under all my father's expectations. Your cocktail was delicious. So delicious, in fact, that it carried me off into a dream. Huh. Professor R. What did you hope to achieve by coming back to this house? 
I don't believe for a moment that you'd ever risk your life just to get revenge on your father. <laughs> Leonard Clarkson. That was my name when I lived here. Everyone called me Lenny. My father taught me all sorts of things so that I would grow up to become a proper heir. How to manipulate people. How to properly use tools such as violence and rewards. But I could never bring myself to care about any of it. You left this place in order to find your true self. But what did that achieve? In the end, you fell back into Lucare. And now you spend your time selling the new drug you created, preying on the weak. You and the Clarksons are exactly alike in that regard. No, you choose your victims indiscriminately, which makes you even uglier. Some people find joy in ruining themselves, offering up their lives to whatever they worship. This cycle has repeated itself since long ago. To me, it's the most noble of actions. Surely you must agree, Agent Morgan. Stop trying to rationalize your crimes with that dramatic gibberish. Vici situdo, the Latin word used to describe a fluctuation between two polar opposites. Galena's body wasn't a declaration of war. It was this, wasn't it? Those severed roots were fakes. Who did you force to kill Galena? I can't believe you figured out that much. You're dangerous. What you're talking about is true madness, not some noble fairy tale. <laughs> you're going to shoot me. Okay. Go ahead and shoot. Come on! Shoot me! Ugh. The Clarkson bloodline is cursed. It needs purification. A blood purge! <laughs>
Zack, here it is again. A red tree and a translucent cocoon. I think we've reached the core. The goddess of fertility will descend into Lucari. And then, the sweet fruit will be ours. Destruction is the first step to creation. <laughs> Lisa's death sent everything into motion. There's no stopping it now. Her death proved how determined I am, how dedicated I am to all who trust in me. Alina and Lise, their deaths were not in vain. They led us to the harvest. The Clarkson blood curse will be washed away. Life must be sacrificed. Blood purge. Blood purge. Blood. Blood. I need blood! Galena and Lise, they're both dead. I can't turn back now! The Red Soul can't die here. You can't erase it! Blood Purge, the Blood Purge! We will create a new world! A new generation! Must be purified! <sighs> That's the true self you worked so hard to find. I'm sorry, Lena. I gave you far more credit than I ever should have. The Clarksons have always been the chosen ones. Proud souls. Divine life-given form. But at some point, that blood became tainted. So I decided to reset it. I need to purify this corrupt blood for the one I love most. After I left home, I met the Red Soul and acquired a guide. And so I created the Red Powder and became an apostle for the Red Magic. The Red Powder transforms the body from within. It creates empowered souls. And mature souls are the greatest offering one can present to the Goddess. 
Lise and Galena didn't lose their minds. They both died with honor. Died with honor? Just how deluded are you? Dismembered them and strung up their bodies in the name of vapid symbolism. Where's the honor in that? So what if they said they wanted to die? Cultists have been saying that for centuries. Silence! You will impede us no longer. You're always so smug. Oh, how I hate you. This is the last you'll ever see of my plan. Now die! Stop my plan. Now. Not even me. Red. Tree. Lena, let go. I'm going to count to three, then you're going to get down on the ground and put your hands behind your head. Got it? See this? If I let go, the bomb in the fireplace will explode. Do something smart for once, Lena. Detonating that bomb won't solve anything. You're wrong. Agent Morgan. It'll give me the ending I've always dreamed of. Leonard. You're wrong. Killing me will bring back our family's prosperity. No! I know I'm right! You... Never change. Once you make up your mind that single idea possessing you, 
It's almost like you're cursing yourself. Oh, my hole is holding on to all your pain. No! You're the one who's wrong! <sighs> when you first told me about the disparity between your mind and your body, I didn't know how to love you. Stop it! I don't want to hear this! But I... I always knew from the very... Stop! Stop talking! There was something special inside you. I also know that you had any cause with your older sister. Your own flesh and blood. Shut up! <laughs> I just... didn't know how to treat you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me. Stop. Please. I never... ever hated you. I always loved you from the bottom, from the bottom of my... I said shut up. Don't, Lena. This is necessary. All of the corrupt blood must die. The Clarkson's blood must be purged. Then, the purity that's left behind can rebuild the Clarkson's legacy. Is that the goddess of fertility? Go and see her with your own eyes. You're an FBI special agent. Surely you can find her. No one can stop my plan now. Not even me. No, stop! Patricia Clarkson. Agent York, can you hear me? What is it, Patty? Where's Melvin? Well, I don't know. He won't answer me, and he ain't at the sheriff's office either. What should I do? You think he got caught up in some kind of trouble? Oh, my... Uh... I did... No. I did... Oh, shit! I got nothing now. Oh! 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 I can't... I can't... Patty, I need someone at the Clarkson's house ASAP. I don't care who you send. They can also ask Daniel Clarkson about the details once they get here. And you should also call an ambulance, just in case. Got it? Huh? Uh, sure. I'm going to head straight over to the sheriff's office, Patty. Let's meet up there. 